Just a couple of quick comments on caring for your bow. So first mm -hmm. of all, uh, make sure that you are loosening your horse hair, like loosen the bow, every time you put your violin away or every time you stop practicing, okay? You want to loosen your bow so that um, the horse hair is kind of, uh, you know, slack like that. Okay, you can see it kind of shaking, okay? Now when I tighten it, um, you want to put your left hand on the frog, okay? And then twist the screw, all right? Well, I see a lot of kids, um, they're holding the bow over here and then tightening it. And there is a mechanism inside that um, it's actually healthier for the bow is if you put your hand on the frog and tighten your bow, all right? Of course, everybody has different value of instruments and things like that, but if you have a very expensive bow, you want to take a good care of it, okay? So um, so when I tighten it, then you can see there's a bit of space here now, and you can see this horse hairs are stretched tight, okay? But you never want to uh, tighten your horse hair so much that the space over here, see how there's more space? less space and then more space. You always want to have that natural curve. Usually depending on the bow, the curve is somewhere around here or over here, all right? We definitely want to have a natural curve there. And if you're playing something that's very meaty and powerful, maybe you can tighten it a little bit more, but you can see, I still see some curvature, right? It's bigger there, smaller space here. I'm looking between the stick and the horse hair and then bigger here, all right? But if there's if it's like a lighter piece and you don't have to do too much effort, then you can go a bit a bit uh looser. It also depends on what technique you're doing. If you're doing a bouncy stroke, ricochet, spiccato, you want to have it just right, okay? So that's important and then when you're done, you need to loosen your horse hair right away. I'm in such a habit of doing it as, I, as I'm just even talking, I start to loosen it because I know I'm about to go set my violin down. All right. The next thing you want to check is um, just be sure that you're keeping your instrument away from heat sources, away from places where direct sun sunshine come in. Um, and, uh, you know, you might have like heat coming from a baseboard or something and you don't even know it. So just be careful because I have seen really, really bad things. I'm going to tighten my bow again. And if you look straight down, so see how I'm pointing the screw towards my nose and I'm looking down at the, at the, um, bow, you can kind of see the same, almost same thing I'm seeing. And so I look at the dark spot of the wood and I compare it to the white of the, the light color of the horse hair. And I followed all the way down to see if my, my wood, the stick, is straight. And often what you'll see is it, it's gonna curve out like that. So the horse hair will make a straight line, but the, but the wood will bow out. And that's a sign of a damaged bow. A lot of bows, even mine, mine is pretty straight, but there's a tiny bit of curvature. A lot of bows naturally do that. But if it's very, very, you know, bent, then it's really going to get in the way of your playing. It's going to change your sound and everything the way, the way that your bow reacts. Okay, so you want to always watch for that. And a big, big reason why that happens very quickly, suddenly, is if it's exposed to too much heat. It ha usually happens in the winter time when kids don't loosen their bow, you have to loosen your bow, and then it's it's near some kind of a heater, okay? So that's really, really scary for me. I never put my instrument anywhere near anything that can harm, harm it, even like <clears throat> near windows or doors. It gets awfully cold over there, and then suddenly your violin is, violin is going through shock treatment, right? It's like cold, and then hot, and cold, and hot, and then it's, it's a bit too much for the instrument. I could talk about this all day. I'll just try to stick to the main points, okay? And then the other thing is that you want to take your rosin cloth that you use to wipe off the rosin and dust from your violin, and you definitely want to go and, you know, take it like this. I usually take my fingers and I pinch my fingers, and that way it goes under and between the, the horse hair, okay? So you definitely want to wipe that off, um, you know, regularly so there's no uh, rosin sitting on this wood 
as well, okay? Uh, rosining your bow, I'm just gonna show you real quick. I have a more detailed video, so I'm gonna link it um, you know, up there for you, so if you wanna see the whole thing. But when I rosin my bow, I tighten it first. You, have, you never use a bow hold when you're tiny, when you're rosining your bow, you just grab it with a firm, firm grip and then you take your rosin. But I typically, I stay in the tip area a long time, right? And then I shimmy down with short strokes just so I know and you have to press you know like a good amount don't press so hard but you can't just barely do it light either that's not gonna make the dust come off you want that solid rosin to be rubbed in a way that the dust starts to come off and the dust starts to go onto your your horse hair right so you shimmy down with the right amount of pressure and then you stay near the frog area a long time too right stay 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 and then you kind of you know even things out. and then I do the long strokes later a lot of things, uh, a lot of people I see, they do their rosin like this with long strokes. And what happens when you do that and then and then you're done, you put it away, is that this part didn't get very much rosin and that part didn't get very much. And so when you go there and you try to play it, you can definitely hear it doesn't have very much traction there and your, your tone quality will suffer. And then it's going to make you not use that area and then you're just going to train yourself to avoid that area. Okay, so you want to train yourself to use the entire bow and the entire bow. You've seen my other videos, you'll, you'll know that I talk about that a lot. Okay, so definitely put rosin there.